Hey everybody, I'm going to try to do a little hand sketch of this equation, um, this absolute value equation to get an idea of the nature or the location of the solutions. Now, uh, 10, 11, this number is approximately one, right? So really all that is, is just this line uh, passing through the origin approximately 45 degrees, all right? Something like that. Okay, now um, the absolute value, absolute value, okay, well, it's the it's shifted to the right almost one unit. And so what I'm gonna do is draw a picture of it. Okay, so we'll have something along these lines. You know, I'm trying to make the slopes approximately the same. The absolute value slope is actually uh, larger. Okay, so the absolute value has a slope of one over here, okay, and then a slope of minus one over here, right? And so it actually has a larger slope than this line here. The slope of this line would be uh, m equals 10 elevenths, right? m equals uh, 10 over 11. Okay, so what we can anticipate here is we certainly have one solution here right along in here, you know, and again, very rough sketch. This is one, 10 over, 11 over 12 is very close to one. So I did, I made it come, the, the vertex come up a, a little shy of one, okay? So we see there's gonna be one solution here, but what about the rest of the solutions? Well, again, the sketch isn't gonna tell you much other than you know that this line has to cross this line somewhere, right? They, they don't, they're not that much different from each other, but this line will have to cross this line at some point, right? Because their slopes are different. Their slopes are different. The slope of this line is 10 over 11. The slope of this line is one. Now the slopes are close, but they are different. So that means the two lines have to intersect somewhere over here, somewhere to the right. Okay. Now, so we anticipate two solutions. All right, which if you guys dealt with the equation, you're not surprised about that. Okay, we anticipate two solutions. And also, it looks like they're going to be uh, a negative solution or positive solutions, right? So we, we anticipate both solutions, call them x sub 1, y sub 1. Uh, x sub 1, comma, sorry, let's just, let me, let me erase that. The two solutions here will, uh, let's call them x sub 1. Uh, I keep wanting to say y, x sub 1, uh, x sub 2. And we can see from the graph, incontrovertibly, that, the, that they're going to be positive. Right? So we, 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 know, we know there's two solutions. It's not a surprise. But the graph tells us we'll end up with two positive solutions. Okay? And again, some people say you can't tell much from a graph. Well, if the slopes are marginally accurate and... You know, you get some idea. It's not a guarantee and it's not a proof, but we would anticipate two positive solutions. Okay, let's go take a look at the solutions. All right, folks. So again, this all just follows from the standard definition of absolute value. If the input argument to the absolute value is positive, then the absolute value of the input argument is the input argument. Okay, and that's what we have right here. If X is greater than or equal to... Uh, uh, 11 twelfths, which would be this part over here to the right, okay? The absolute value of x minus 11 twelfths is x minus 11 twelfths, all right? Now, in a similar fashion, if you're to the left, if you're to the left of 11 twelfths, which would be up here somewhere, okay, uh, the absolute value of the input would be minus the input, which is just flipping these signs, right? Okay? And so we just carry on. I've done most of the work for you. Uh, again, there's two, there's two break points here, uh, greater than or equal to 11 twelfths for x. And if you work through the arithmetic here, it's fairly straightforward to get this as one of the solutions. Again, I won't bore you too much with the steps. Uh, perhaps you would want to know what's going on right here. We have x minus 11 twelfths is equal to 10 elevenths x. Well, if you subtract 10 elevenths, from x, that's the same as subtracting 10 elevenths from 11 elevenths, but that's 1 eleventh, okay? So you get x over 11 is equal to 11 over 12, and you end up with this expression right here. So x is equal to 
121 over 12, which is approximately 10. Okay, it's 10 and 1 12, so we'll just say approximately 10. It's actually 10 and 1 12, exactly. Now right here, uh, what is this? This is 121. over um, okay 21 times 12 21 times 12 is 20 times 12 plus 12 that's 240 plus 12 is 252 okay so we get 121 over 252 and that's not too far from one half right we'll put lazy equal sign here one half right it's it's it's, it's smaller but it's somewhere close to there right that's a little bit of a crude approximation but if you'll take a look uh, when we went on this hand sketch it's easy to believe this would be that number, right? Somewhere around here would be, uh, somewhere around here would be what, one half, okay? Now again, the rest of the graph isn't much help on determining the, the, uh, that the solution would be 10, right? But the one way to believe it is that 10 over 11 and, and one are, are pretty close to each other, right? So it's gonna be a gradual change before this graph intersects this graph, okay? So it'll, 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 this graph will intersect this graph and then this graph will stay on top after that since it has a larger slope. Again, the, this, the, the nature of this crude sketch isn't gonna tell you that it was all the way out at 10 where it was gonna happen, all right? Uh, so that's, that's, that's fine, it's just, it, but it's enough to know we have two positive uh, real solutions. Now let's see what else here. I think that's about it, folks. Uh, these are the two solutions. Let me get them circled. Um, and uh, uh, thank you for viewing.